gift ideas for wood turners. I've got some for you. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today I'm going to share with you guys some gift ideas for wood turners. Now, you might want to share this video with somebody who is going to be purchasing gifts for you if you are the wood turner. But you might also find yourself seeing some of these things and going, heck, I need that right now and clicking and get them. I know that's how I do it when I see some of these videos. So I'm going to share with you guys today some of the things that I love to use on a regular basis, and I think you'll love them too. And if some of the things you may already have, if you don't, you're probably going to want them. So let's dive in and take a look at this gift guide for wood turners. Okay, the first item or gift idea is a turning glove. A turning glove is great to protect your hand that's closest to your turning from getting hurt. You can get hot shavings coming off this where they're painful, and you can get splinters that come off. This happens typically with drier bowl blanks and larger pieces. If you're turning a large bolt blank that has bark on it, those bark chunks can come off really hard and hurt. This is designed to help pad that hand that's closest to the turning. Now, I get a lot of people that say, well, you shouldn't have any kind of clothing anywhere near the turning. And while that's true, the odds of this getting caught up in the turning are very poor. You want to make sure your glove fits tightly, the fingers are removed, and it keeps it tight against your skin. This hand should always be behind the tool rest, so there's no issue there. You should not be have anything get caught. And if this glove gets caught, that means your hand's going to get caught. So you've done something you shouldn't do if you've got if you're getting caught up in that. So I don't think the glove is going to be the problem. Of course, statistically, I'm sure it is possible. Just keep your hands behind the tool rest at all time. Now, before, I was taking regular work gloves and I was just snipping off the fingers. So that gives us a little more dexterity when we're holding the tools so we can really feel what's going on. But I discovered something recently thanks to viewers that wrote in and exp expressed to me that you can also purchase riding gloves. There's both bicycle riding gloves and motorcycle riding gloves that have fingers exposed. And what's nice about purchasing these is the ends of the fingers are all finished, meaning they're not going to fray apart. When I was cutting the gloves and just cutting the fingertips off, they would typically start falling apart after a period of time. That was no good. So these are great to have to protect your hand when you're turning. Now, the other question is, what do you do with the right glove? Well, I got to be honest, I just got rid of mine. I don't have any use for it. I'm never going to go around right-handed with a right-handed glove with fingers out. I'm not going to do some kind of Michael Jackson impersonation or anything like that. So I have no use for it. So I just simply got rid of it. Now, if you're a left-handed turner and you actually can turn your lathe completely around, you might want to protect your right hand. You're protecting the hand that's closest to your turning when you're turning. Now, just remember, if you're left-handed and you turn your lathe all the way around and reverse the orientation of the lathe when you're turning, you can do that, but you need to use a set screw with all of your screw-on attachments, such as your chuck and your faceplate, because if you get a little catch, the orientation of the lathe going in reverse will unthread those attachments very quickly. So if you've got your RPM set at say 800 RPMs and your thread count on your headstock is eight threads per inch, then if I do my math right, 800 RPMs per minute, that's about, you're getting about three quarters of a second for that chuck or that face plate to unscrew itself and come off of the lathe. And that'll happen very quickly. So Make sure you use a set screw if you're using your lathe in reverse, but that's a whole other thing. Get a glove to protect your hand that is closest to your turning while you're at the lathe. Okay, the next gift idea are safety glasses. Wow, that seems really boring, but I can tell you these safety glasses are fantastic for two reasons. First of all, they have bifocals built into them. Now, if you're like me, you need a little extra magnification to see up close. And safety glasses by themselves typically don't have magnification built into them, but the bifocals do. And this helps me look down and get that. So you can actually get the bifocal strength that you need on these glasses. Now, another big plus with these is when I'm wearing my face shield, Typically, I'm looking down and to get to truly protect my head and my neck, 
I typically take the crown and kind of tilt it forward and it pushes down on my forehead. So sometimes I need to adjust my glasses. And if I'm wearing my respirator and my face shield, then it gets a little tricky with the safety glasses. These particular glasses are made by Carhart, or the brand is Carhart. I don't know if they actually make them, but the stems are adjustable. So I can get these right at the right angle. So they're actually resting on my ear and they fit between my respirator and my face shield and I can get them exactly where I want them so that I can be looking down and see what I need to see while I'm turning. So I really like these. That I know it's kind of boring, but when you get the right fit for a piece of equipment that you use on a regular basis or you get the flexibility to adjust it like this, it just makes things really nice and it makes things just that much easier when you're turning. So I highly recommend these. I use them every time I'm turning and I think they're a great gift idea. If you enjoy making your own bowl blanks and you like attaching them to the lathe using a face plate, then you know that screws can be a little tricky driving into wet wood. That's when I discovered the impact driver. This impact driver has the ability to drive screws into the most difficult wood, whether it's wet wood or really hard dry wood. It just drives them in and pulls them back out, no problem. I was using a regular electric drill before I started using this impact driver. And I gotta tell you, it was super frustrating because number one, the electric drill typically didn't have enough power to drive the screws in or pull them back out. And it would strip everything out and I would have all these issues. I would have to use vice grips to lock onto the screw and unscrew it because I stripped the head out. Just a big headache. With the impact driver, it is night and day different. I use a little square slotted insert. I don't know what this is actually called. I'll put a link to this as well. But this essentially, and the other thing to know about the impact driver is that it doesn't have the typical grip on it. It has like a socket type grip for the attachments. But what happens is I drive the square headed screws into the wood. They never slip ever. It simply drives it in until it's seated. And then when I need to take it out, it pulls it right out. It is so nice. And this guy's littler than most of the electric drills I was using too. So I love my impact driver. If you don't have one, if you've been using an electric drill, you will love this gift because it is going to change everything when you're driving screws in for a faceplate. If you've seen any of my turning videos, you've probably seen me use these metal dividers. These are fantastic. These guys I've used for years. They have a great solid metal construction and they just work. They do a great job of scribing my tenon size. What I simply do is I bring them up, I size them to the jaws on the chuck that I'm gonna be using, and then I transfer this directly to the turning so that I know how wide to make the tenon on the bowl. And what's great about this particular set is they will open really wide. So if you have really big, if you have a really big chuck, I don't know if you'll have a big chuck like that, but it is possible, I guess. They are super adjustable down to my small chuck. I can adjust them anywhere and they are solid. They're rock solid. Do you remember back in grade school when you had those little those little cheap stamped metal compasses that we'd spin around and you throw them in a junk drawer and they'd end up getting twisted and bent up. Well, these are not like that. These are nice, solid. They're great to use. And these points are fantastic. I actually use these to scribe lines, really fine lines and different things. So great tool to have, not super expensive. This is one of those gift ideas. It's perfect to give this to someone that you love that's buying you gifts because this is a, a nice gift that you'll appreciate and you'll be able to use on a regular basis and it's high quality. I've been using this for years now and I've had no issues with it. It's all straight, everything looks beautiful. It's a great tool to have and a great gift. This next gift idea is super valuable. Now we can have all the equipment in the world and all the tools and all the fancy gadgets, but if we don't know how to use them properly, what is it worth? That's why what I highly recommend for a gift either just to give yourself or to suggest somebody else get for you 
are my courses. Right now, I've got four different courses online. I have tool sharpening, I have bowl gouge mastery, I have wood bowl turning, and I have tree to bowl understanding green wood. With these four courses, you will learn everything you need to know in one place. Each course is set up with very short, concise lessons that each have a video, and that video specifically deals with that particular lesson, and there's text as well as graphics when they're appropriate for each of the lessons. What happens is you go out to your shop and you turn, and everything's going great, and then you think, wait a minute, I need to remember how to do this one thing. Well, when you have my courses, you simply go back to the course, you go through the lessons, the lessons are clearly labeled, and you click on the le lesson topic that you need help with, and boom, it's right there, and you're ready to go. It's fantastic. There are hundreds of people in the courses around the world right now that are enjoying them and rapidly building their wood bowl turning skills. That's why I put them all together, so that you can learn how to turn wood bowls and make the bowls that you're imagining. So be sure to check out my courses and give them to yourself as a gift or ask somebody else to get them for you because you will not miss out with this gift. And you're going to be very thankful when you look back and you realize how much you learned and how quickly you were able to do the turnings that you wanted. A while back, I made a video all about lighting while we're turning. You might want to check out that video after this video. And light is super important. I highly recommend getting good quality lights while you're turning or for your lathe while you're turning. I recommend these. These are Moffitt brand lamp arms. This is essentially what you're purchasing is this flexible gooseneck lamp arm and the lamp itself with the power cord. This is how it comes. It's essentially a self-contained unit. It doesn't come with a light bulb. You, create, you purchase your own light bulb. But what happens is it's all self-contained and what they've done with this design is so cool is they have this little socket connection and each lamp comes with about three different ways to attach this. There's like a single post that this will snap onto, there's a wall-mounted bracket that this will snap onto, and there's a third, I can't remember what that is right off. But you can easily mount these directly to your lathe or to the wall next to your lathe or onto a stand near your lathe. And then what that gives you is it gives you the flexibility to move this light around and position it exactly where you need it. Sometimes I get it right down in there inside the turning so I can see really well and it works great. Now, this company actually makes medical equipment. This adjustable arm is unbelievable. For me, I've used this for years now and they never move. Once I position this where I want it, it never moves. It stays in that. Now, if I've got some vibration on the lathe, it might vibrate a little bit. But my experience in the past with most lamps like this, if you put it in this position, slowly it's going to start doing this and it'll be hanging down here after a while. This guy will stay there pretty much forever. I don't know exactly how they're manufacturing this, but it's industrial grade quality. Fantastic. Now, I'm not sponsored by Moffitt Lights. I'm not sponsored by any of the people or any of the equipment that I'm recommending here. I'm simply sharing with you guys what I love to use. And these lights are fantastic. I actually have two on my lathe and the two work great. I use them all the time. And this is an extra one that I have around that I'm planning on mounting somewhere else where I can use it. I actually have another one at my bandsaw station. They are really that good. So check out the Moffitt lamp or the adjustable arm lamp, and I'll put a link to this. And obviously I'm putting a link for all of these items in the description box below this video on YouTube. Now that brings up another point. If you ever need to check a link for anything you see me use, you can go to my website, turnawoodbowl.com and put forward slash gear, G-E-A-R, forward slash gear, and that'll take you right to my recommended equipment section. There I have different sections that will break down everything that I use and I recommend for you. So you might want to check that out if you ever have a question about any of the equipment that you need for turning. So let's move on.
If you're a woodworker and a wood turner, then you were most likely told a long time ago that mark your wood with pencils. And pencil is great because you can sand it off or erase it and it doesn't leave a long lasting mark. Pencils are great. However, if a pencil like this is around, it's kind of hard to keep the edge in good condition. And with a round pencil, they roll off of things. Well, the way around the, the Rolling is, you can use a carpenter pencil. This is flat, but the lead is difficult to keep sharp and keep it intact. This kind of wants to break off in that too. Well, I was watching another YouTuber recommend the Pika pencil, and the Pika pencil is amazing. Let me show you why. First of all, I don't like mechanical pencils. For whatever reason, both of my sons, when they were in grade school, loved using mechanical pencils. So they were around all the time. I just never got the hang of it and never really enjoyed them. This is different. Now, this has a clip so you can put it in your shirt pocket and it's got this nice protective cover so that the lead is always protected. Now, this lead is big and thick and it's durable. This also has a locking mechanism so it can push up from the bottom and push the lead out if I need to. Here's what's really cool. The sharpener is built right into the protective cover. So you can just simply place your lead in there and sharpen it up very quickly and you've got this nice, crisp, sharp, point. And then you can slip it in there and keep it protected so it doesn't break. And the color's bright. You can keep these around and keep them handy. And it doesn't roll because of the clip. So this checks all the boxes for a really good lead-based marker. Yep. Another nice thing is the tip on this is just the right size and length that it will fit through various templates, like this circle template. You can see right there that it's actually protruding through there. Well, that's not something that you can do usually with a pencil like this. It barely sticks through there because of the shape of the lead and the way it's supported. So I am really excited about this new pencil and I'm gonna be using this pretty frequently. Here's a great gift idea that's going to expand your mind. Books. There are three books, actually let's make this four books, that I highly recommend. If you are into wood, woodworking or trees, you will love these books. The first and foremost is The Hidden Life of Trees. This book is written by an author in Germany that worked in the lumber industry and then later managed part of the Black Forest. His life experience with trees is absolutely amazing. And the information that you're gonna gather from this, honestly, for me, it changed me. I now, when I'm outside and I see trees, I see them differently. I see them, I've always appreciated them, but now I see them in a whole different light. And I'm imagining all of the things that are happening and the way the trees are networked with one another and what's going on underground with the fungal networks. And there's just so much from this one book. So if you don't read any of these books, read this one and you will really enjoy it. You're gonna come away with a wealth of knowledge. Another great book to read is Finding the Mother Tree. Now, this book, as well as the first book, The Hidden Life of Trees, helps unveil the fact that as humans, we really don't know exactly how trees work. And I think it's important for us to appreciate that. I know that I've gone through my entire life thinking, yeah, all this stuff has been solved. There's scientists that are on all of this and they know all of that. Now, I'm not trying to diminish science. I'm not trying to diminish anybody that's in the tree industry. And there may be people out there who think they know everything about trees, and perhaps they do. But according to these books, there are a lot of mysteries that are still unsolved about trees. So check these books out. I think they'll open your eyes and your mind to trees and probably have you seeing trees differently as well. Now, another great book that's really interesting, it's more of a novel that's based on quite a few facts about trees, is The Overstory. The Overstory is this broad story of how trees have integrated into various characters' lives in the book. It's really an interesting read, and I highly recommend this as well. The final recommendation is Spalted Wood. This book covers the history how and why spalt forms, how to best utilize spalted wood, and how to accelerate spalted wood. So this is a great 
book if you are curious about spalt. And it goes over the history, which I think is really cool. Did you realize that spalted wood has been used in decorative, ornate woodworking for centuries? It's been used for centuries and it still exists and looks beautiful because it lasts for centuries. Now, I'm not going to spill the beans on why it lasts so long. You'll have to check that out. However you slice it, books are a great gift idea. Here's a gift idea that probably shouldn't wait for a holiday. It's a good quality respirator. If you're using a paper respirator or a cloth respirator and you can smell or taste wood or the shavings or dust while you're turning, it's not protecting you. Get yourself a good quality respirator with changeable filters so you can clean these out and you can keep these fresh so that you're not breathing in dust. Dust is super dangerous for us over the long term. You can turn with dust in the air for a long time, years even, before it catches up with you. And then when it catches up with you, it's not good. I've met many turners that have had lots of lung issues. So give yourself this gift. I would do this one right now if you're not already doing it. Buy a good respirator and use it all the time you're around any kind of wood that's flying around in the air. So respirators, a great gift for yourself right now if you need one. This is a great item to have around. This is lens cleaner. Now, it sounds really basic. I know that you probably use Windex or water or whatever, and I did that in the past too. I got this lens cleaner that's designed for plastic, and ever since I got it, it's incredible how well it does cleaning my face shield and my safety glasses. About every time that I start turning, I take this and I go ahead and clean up all of my lenses. And it's incredible because I sometimes I'll put them on first before I've cleaned them and it'll be a little bit of a haze and I'll think, well, it's pretty close. I could, might as well start turning. And then I said, no, I'll go clean them. And I go over and I spray them, put a little mist of that on and wipe them down really good. And it's incredible how clear the vision is after I've used this. So it's really good. This is not expensive, great gift idea. And you're gonna see better when you're turning. Now, you've probably seen me use these in other videos. If you like making your own bowl blanks and you go out and cut wood, you really need to mark it. And even the really cool pencil that I showed you earlier isn't gonna work so great. What I use instead are these lumber crayons. And actually, I'm getting low on this box, but essentially, there are these great wax-based crayons. They will write on any wood. It could be dripping wet after just being cut and this will write on them. It could be bone dry, it could be a rough surface, this will write on them. So this is great for marking off where you're gonna make cuts. I use this especially on the cut ends when I'm trying to mark and determine where I wanna split the log. I will use these crayons to simply draw that line and then rotate the log and get it positioned so that I can make the cut really clean and I remember where I wanna cut. A lot of times I'll go through and I'll mark up a bunch of logs and then I'll go through and cut them all up. And if I don't mark them clearly, it's very easy for one to rotate and I might miscut it. So it's nice to take a few moments, look at the log, get it to cut right where you want it and make a good mark. And this is the tool to do that. And it's a great gift idea. Now, this next gift idea sort of goes along with this. Now, when we're wood turning, it's really difficult to manage dust because if you think about it, we're throwing dust and shavings everywhere. This is not like most other woodworking where we can have a nice vacuum hose attached to the tool that we're using and that tool just spits all of the nice fine dust right into that vacuum hose and it can suck it all up. Instead, with wood turning, we're throwing stuff everywhere from large shavings to really fine particles of dust. That's why a respirator is really important. The second component that I use is a good quality air filter. Now, I have this air filter mounted on my ceiling, and what I do and the way I utilize this is, typically when I'm done turning, and I'm done sanding, I've got everything done, I'm cleaning up my shop. I keep my respirator on, by the way, that entire time. I always have a respirator on, so I'm not inhaling those particles. But even when you're done and you've cleaned up the shop, if you watch, especially if you have one of the lamps that I showed you earlier, and if you position that so that there's a dark background behind it, you're gonna see little floaties, floating dust everywhere still. That's when I kick on my air filter. And this air filter basically cycles through all of the air in the room. It sucks it up, 
runs it through its filter, grabs all those little dinky particles, and just clears the air. It's really nice. And you can actually see it working, again, using that light source. You can see there's nothing in the air after it's run for only a few minutes. It's very powerful and moves the air very quickly and filters it out and cleans the air. It, leans, it leaves the shop in just a really nice state because the air is just free of dust particles. Then I take my respirator off and I know that I'm not sucking in those fine particles of dust. So I actually use this for the majority of the time and I use my air filter to filter out those last particles that are lingering around so that the air is safe to breathe. That is a great gift idea. It might be a little more pricey for somebody to get for you. If you're looking for something for your shop and you're looking for something to protect your lungs, it's a great gift to get yourself because that is gonna clean up the air for you. Okay, so we've had quite a few practical, functional, somewhat serious gifts, but if you know how important all of those are and how you can utilize those in your shop, you know how valuable all those gifts would be if you were to receive them. So to end up this gift guide, I'm gonna do something kind of fun. I've got this fun gift idea, and that is a log pillow. Yes, a log pillow. These are so cool. And there's actually several different types of logs that are available. This is a soft, cushy pillow that is looks like a log and it's kind of a fun little conversation piece and it looks great sitting on your furniture. I picked this one out because it matches the chair I like to sit in and I love it. It's a lot of fun. You can use it as a as a headrest. It's just really fantastic. It's a fun little fun little thing to have and it's a fun gift to have in the house to let everyone know how much you love trees and how trees are important to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this gift guide. And if you have, do me a huge favor and click the like button below this video. I greatly appreciate that. Let me know what gifts you think I should have added in this gift guide by leaving me a comment below as well. And I'm be curious to see what you guys say and what other gifts you think would be good to give this holiday season. Remember, check out my courses on my website, turnawoodbowl.com. Up at the top, you'll see courses. Check those out. I think you're going to love them. You're going to learn so much very quickly, and you're going to be turning the bowls that you imagine. So check those out. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribing, and check out my other videos. I have dozens of other videos, and I've got plenty more videos in the can headed your way. So subscribe, and click that bell, and you'll be notified when these new videos come out. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy turning.